Hello, everyone, and welcome to our second Meet the Dot Artist webinar and our first Meet the Dot Artist webinar of 2024. I hope that all of you have uh, returned to work and everything you're doing in your lives after uh, a good holiday season and that your 2024 is off to a great start. Um, we're excited to begin a new year here at Dot Art. So the Dot Art Registry is really happy to host this. And on behalf of Olvi and the entire Dot Art team, it's my pleasure to welcome you. I'm Jeff Sass. I'm the CMO of Dot Art Registry. And it's my pleasure to uh, moderate today's webinar. We have three extremely talented artists that we're going to give introduce to you and give you a chance to meet them and their work. Um, before we get to them, I'm just going to give a brief uh, update on some of the things happening at Dot Art. And, talk to you a little bit about the eight different ways that you can use your .art domain name. Uh, at .art Registry, we're very proud to have a community of over 250,000 users. Um, and this represents everyone from individual artists, like the artists you'll meet today, to important galleries and museums and institutions and brands. So really, we're very excited to have so many unique and talented and passionate uh, participants in the dot art community, all of whom want to declare their part in the art world, which we're excited about. Um, dot art domains are also ENS capable. So if you're looking at the future with web three, um, you can actually use the same dot art name in the traditional web and also have it point to an asset in web three or to a crypto wallet address. So you're future proof if you're using a dot art domain. And also as the the Global Registry for Art, we provide a lot of services and tools to support artists and the art community. So it's not just about our domain names. We have a lot of tools and services, and I'll mention a few of those. And then everything we do really supports our charitable initiative, which is the Art Therapy Initiative. We believe very strongly in the therapeutic benefits of art, and it's very important for us to share access to and information about art therapy. So before we begin, I want to ask a very simple question. Here's the question. What does Sharon Stone, the gallery Hauser and Wirth, the brand Mercedes Benz, and the performance artist Marina Abramovic all have in common? What do they have in common? They all use a dot art domain. Sharon Stone, who's known as an award-winning actress, is actually an extremely talented artist, and she's launched SharonStone.art to show off her art career. Um, Hauser & Wirth, one of the top art galleries in the world, uses HauserWirth.art. Mercedes-Benz, you know them as a luxury car manufacturer. They also have a very extensive and very valuable corporate art collection. And at Mercedes-Benz.art, they highlight their corporate art collection. And of course, one of the greatest living performance artists, Marina Abramovic, she has MAI.art, which is her website for the Marina Abramovic Institute. So all four of those disparate people are using a dot art domain, and we're very proud to have them as part of our community. I mentioned the Art Therapy Initiative, and I just want to give a little history behind it. This is Medina Casamova. Medina is the eldest daughter of dot art founders Ovi and Rehan Casamova. And Medina at childbirth had some issues that caused some challenges when it comes to speech and communication. But at a very young age, she showed an interest in and a talent for art. And today, as a young woman, she's a very talented and successful artist. And she literally found her voice through her art. So the Dot Art family knows firsthand the therapeutic benefits of art. Uh, and so that's why the Art Therapy Initiative is so important to us. We want to make art therapy accessible to as many people as possible. And so we take a portion of our revenue from our business and use that to support the Art Therapy Initiative. The first thing we did was make a $1 million commitment to fund a fellowship in graduate studies in art therapy at the George Washington University in Washington, DC. They have the oldest art therapy program in the country and we're very proud to be partnered with them and to be supporting them. So art therapy is very important. So by supporting .art, you're also supporting the Art Therapy Initiative and we thank you for that. I mentioned galleries, and these are just some of the galleries that are using a dot art domain. Last year, it was a lot of fun. We traveled to many art fairs from New York to London to Miami, 
And at each one, uh, we had a chance to talk to some of the best galleries in the world who are using a dot art domain. Um, so when you use a dot art domain as an artist, you're also in the same uh, community as these famous galleries, which is very nice. Other things that we do to support the community and to support art in general, we're very proud to be partnered with the 14th Shanghai Biennale. The Biennale opened in November of last year and it runs until the end of March this year. So it's ongoing right now. And the official website for the Biennale is at cosmoscinema.art. So it's at a dot art website. And at cosmoscinema.art, each week there's a new film from the Biennale that's streamed live on the website. So I encourage you to visit cosmoscinema.art. And if you happen to be in China, in the Shanghai area, I encourage you to visit the Power Station of Art Museum where the Shanghai Biennale is being held. So we're very proud to partner with them. We also sponsor every year, we've done this now for seven years, the Digital Innovation in Art Award. This is another way we support artists in the community. This is an award in partnership with GP Bullhound, which is a well-known venture capitalist firm in London. And we give this award to a business or businesses that show great innovation in technology related to art. Past winners have been Artichek, Artwork Ar Archive, Wonder. We've had applicants such as Artsy and Verisart you might be familiar with. This year, we had two co-winners, um, Art of Eve from Austria and Well of Art from Poland. As you can see, it's a very global um, world, the art world, as you know. And even today, we have three artists from, from all over the world who'll be joining us in just a few moments. Um, the judges for the Di Digital Innovation in Art Award included um, Anton Vidokli, who is the curator of the Shanghai Biennale, Dean Fairless uh, from the American Alliance of Museums, Paul Nix, who's president of Domains at GoDaddy, and uh, several other you know, people notable in the art world. So if you have uh, art-related tech business or digital innovation, or you have friends who, I encourage you to have them apply for this year's awards. We'll be announcing those applications in the coming months, so stay tuned for that. I mentioned tools and services we provide to support artists, and ID.art is one that we're very excited about. We're just about to launch the beta version, but the alpha version is open to the public right now, so you can check it out at ID.art. And this is really an all-in-one platform where you can set up your artist profile, you can create certificates of authenticity for all of your works. Each of your works of art has its own dedicated web page where you can add video and documents and everything to tell the story and the provenance behind that work of art. You can even mint NFTs from in the platform. This is all in one place. All of these services that if you got them from different places would be very expensive and we make it easily available to you just through ID.art. So I encourage you to check out ID.art if you have a chance. It's open right now. And finally, we also published this past year our first edition of the Dot Art Odyssey. Uh, and this is a great publication with tremendous content. It's available on Amazon.com in both a soft cover and a hardcover version. And all of the content, which is a really great read for anyone interested in the arts, all of the content is either written by or about people from the art, the dot art community, businesses and individuals from the dot art community. So this is another way we support artists and, and we hope to have some of you um, featured in this, the next edition of this publication. So that's that. Um, so those are some of the ways we support the community and, and why dot art? You know, one of the things people often say, well, I already have a domain, why would I want a dot art domain? Well, if you have anything to do with the art world, your digital identity is very important and a dot art domain is the most clear way to declare yourself as part of the art community, as part of, as an artist or as part of the art community. And no matter how you use your dot art domain, and today I'm gonna to take you through quickly eight different ways you can use it, you're gonna benefit from that. You're gonna benefit from being able to declare yourself as part of the art world. You're gonna benefit from the SEO benefits inherent in a dot art name when someone is searching for you and using the term art. And you're really gonna stand out as the artist or art business you are. You know, if someone's looking at janedoe.com, janedoe.com could be anyone, could be anything. janedoe.art, you immediately know that that's the artist, Jane Doe. Very famous artist, Jane Doe. <laughs> uh, same thing for businesses. If you see plaza.com, that could be any business. There's a, you know, 10 or 12 different meanings for the word plaza. It could be any one of those. But if you see plaza.art, you're immediately going to think of the art supply store plaza. So 
Dot art will declare your role in the art world to everyone who sees it. Um, and I mentioned the ENS names really with a dot art domain, you're future proofing your domain, you can work in web two and web three, so you're ready for whatever comes. So quickly, before I introduce our three talented dot artists today, I want to walk through eight different ways you can use your dot art domain. So it's not just about changing your brand over, although you can do that. There are a lot of other ways to benefit from using a dot art domain. Obviously, you can use it as your primary brand and your primary website, as Simplified.art does. It's an artist platform. Their brand is Simplified.art. That's pretty straightforward. And we have many, many, many businesses and individuals using their .art as their primary domain. You could also set up your .art domain as an e-commerce site to focus on selling your art. So you might have a different website for other aspects of your life and business, but if you want to sell your art, you can use your .art name as your e-commerce site, as Artily does here. Another thing, of course, if you're an individual artist, using your .art name to set up your online portfolio is a great use case. You want to make your art available to the world. You want to stake your place on the internet. And as I mentioned before, if you register your .art domain at our flagship store at get.art, actually we have a free website portfolio portfolio builder that comes with every .art domain at get.art. Very easy to use. In five or six minutes, you can have all of your artwork online and set up that digital presence. And then also we have id.art, which is another way to set up a little bit of a more robust portfolio if you want to take advantage of some of the other tools and features that are built into id.art. So both of those are readily available with your .art domain. You can also use a .art domain as a deep link into a, a bigger website with lots of other content. So for example, many businesses have art related activities, but they're hard to find on their website. Bank of America does a lot to support the arts in different communities, and they have a whole section of their website about arts and culture. But the domain name for that is very long and very complicated. So they use both bankofamerica.art and bofa.art as a direct shortcut to that section of their website. So if they want to promote their art related services, instead of sending someone to their homepage and having that person dig around and try to find the arts and culture section, they could just tell them go to bofa.art or bankofamerica.art and it takes them right there as a shortcut. So that's a very good way for big companies and brands that have detailed websites but have art related activities to use their .art domain. But you can also use it as a brand, as a separate website. So Porsche, the luxury car manufacturer, of course, they have Porsche.com. That's their primary website. But they're also very involved in some art related projects. And they've supported some very interesting art installations all over the world. So they use Porsche.art as a separate website, all about their Art of Dreams project. So you can use your .art name for a separate art related project separate from your main website. So if you go to Porsche.art, all the information there is about their Art of Dreams uh, project. You can also redirect, of course, to your existing URLs. So LACMA, which is the Los Angeles Contemporary Museum of Art, um, they use LACMA.art to redirect to their homepage at LACMA.org. Um, but it's still important for them to use the .art domain and get all those SEO benefits and use it for marketing and promotion because LACMA.org could be anything. I don't necessarily know what those letters stand for. But if I see LACMA.art, I immediately know that that's going to be the Contemporary Museum of Art. So redirecting to an existing URL still helps your name stand out and take advantage of some of the benefits of using that .art name for your brand. We mentioned Web3, so you could also link your .art name to content in Web3 or to a crypto wallet as um, MLO.art does here. And then finally, you can use your .art name to link to a social media page. Now, there are a lot of artists now who feel like they don't need a website. I don't agree with that. I think it's really important to have your own property on the internet that you own and control. So having your own website is very important. But if you're one of those people who feel like having your art on an Instagram page is sufficient, you can still take advantage of and benefit from using a dot art name and linking it directly to that Instagram page. If you have someone search for you on Instagram, they're going to see other search results. They can be distracted by someone else's page or some other visual thing they see. But if you use your dot art net domain and have it linked directly to your Instagram page, like Anna Dragomir does, 
you are creating literally a tunnel that sends them right to your page. There's no distractions. They get right to your Instagram page. Plus you're training them to go to your dot art page. So in the future, if you want to change it from Instagram to something else, if you want to build out your own website, you've already trained your fans and your audience to go to your dot art domain and your Instagram page will now show up more in search engines as people search for you and, and art because your dot art name is going to be indexed there probably better than your Instagram page would have on its own. So there are a lot of advantages to using that dot art domain to direct to your social media page like Anna Dragovir does here. So those are very quickly um, eight different ways you can see a dot art, you could use a dot art domain. And as you see in all of those cases, you still reap the benefits of declaring yourself as a member of the art world and of taking advantage of, of being recognized and easily found with that dot art name. So now it's my pleasure to move us on to the highlight of the show, our Meet the Dot Artist section, where we're gonna get to meet three extremely talented artists and from all over the world. We have a very global show today. But the first artist I'd like to introduce is Ia Voynich, um, who's an illustrator. Ia is based in Italy. She's an illustrator and storyteller, primarily focused on children's books. Her experience spans publishing, concept art, and art direction, uh, working with a variety of publishers, creative agencies, and private clients. It's my pleasure now to introduce you to Ia. Hi there. Uh, I'm Ia Voynich, illustrator of children's books, and I will tell a little about myself, uh, how I begin my art career. Um, because it was unexpectedly. I have a background in the children's psychology and uh, uh, my work as an illustrator began with the simple illustrations for my friend's book. And after that, um, I was involved in all this uh, world of book illustrations. Uh, and I'm happy that I can work with children's books. So, um, um mm, uh, i can tell a little about um uh, my story about that um uh, i imagine that my art is like a bridge between imagination and emotion uh and uh creating illustrations for me it's uh, uh helps me uh to understand better kids and their hearts, minds, their emotions. And uh, um, also I have a great critic in uh, my daughter who always involved in the process of illustrations uh, because some illustrations she likes more, some illustrations she can't understand. Or when she see, um, for example, uh, an illustration, uh, a story about a little girl, she wants to know more about what will happen, uh, what will happen with this character, uh, what environment will be around this character and so on. Um, um, well, uh, like um, central theme or concept of my art, it's uh, that I'm trying to explore themes of imagination, empathy and self-discovery. Uh, and uh, uh, I want to tell a little about the process of work because usually uh, work begins with the main character. And uh, I will show you my screen. Just in one minute. Uh, because the main character is. Sorry, one minute. I don't know if it can see the illustrations.
Okay. Okay, just a little help. Uh, okay, now we can see your screen. Yes. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, the main process begin with the main character because before to make a storyboard of the book, I need to understand what will be the character, what hair he'll have, what emotions uh, will be uh, in the book, uh, if he will be sad, happy, and so on. So uh, at the beginning of every book begins with the main character and uh, it's called like a card card of main character where i took all the possible emotions uh and poses so after this i began to make a storyboard like this uh it's a storyboard with very rough sketches sometimes only i can understand <laughs> all this but uh, for publishing houses, of course, I made more clear illustrations, more clear sketches. Uh, and after the ready storyboard, it began uh, to be uh, also this, for example, um, sketches of the future image like this one. And um, if to back to these rough sketches, it became as a silent book that I did last year about a little girl and her adventures in the wood with the magic fox. So I usually uh, use uh, watercolor, gouache, and the digital techniques. Uh, combining like traditional um, worlds with the flexibility of digital media. And uh, one more project about I uh, want to tell, it's uh, called uh, Childhood Fears, and it's a collaboration with uh, um, our clothing brand Roma e Tosca. Mm -hmm. Again, I will show you this one. Uh, it's a very uh, interesting project because it's uh, not typical for me uh, when my illustrations that I usually do for books uh, or postcards or something like this uh, go in for uh, take life with the beautiful tissues, fabric, and so on. It will be the spring collection, and uh, uh, it's I'm really excited about all this because uh, now my images have have life on something not typical, <laughs> like these ones. Uh, and. Uh, usually and also i wanted to tell about um, my future collaboration uh it's a book in process uh it's a book i want to stop the screen <laughs> sorry um, uh, my future um, my future now process it's uh um, about a uh, book for kids from four to six years uh, about funny vikings and their adventures. Uh, unfortunately, I can't show the pictures because it's still in the process, but I'm very excited of this project and that what will be in the end. So maybe I'm finished, thank you. Thank you, Ia. That was great. I have a quick question for you before we, we go into the next artist. You do the storyboards and everything. It, it, it's almost like creating an animation. Have you animated any of your work before? Have you thought of moving from books to animation? Uh, sometimes, yes. Sometimes I have some illustration that I try to animate, like this uh, story about girl in the forest. So maybe 
I will do some little movie <laughs> with this. Terrific. Well, we look forward to seeing that. But um, thank you for sharing your process. It's really interesting thank to you. see that the character study first and then the sketches and then the storyboards and then the, the final work. It's um, very inspiring. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ia. So our next dot artist, it's my pleasure to introduce Nabusha Sabotik, known as Shonik. And he's a digital artist. Shonik has 14 years of experience. He's a graphic and product designer known for working with top brands and exploring diverse artistic styles. Starting in digital in 2003, he transitioned to forums and platforms like DeviantArt. And since January of 2021, he's been very active in the NFT space, um, selling his art on the blockchain and featuring in notable exhibitions, primarily working in 3D. So we look forward to seeing more about that. Shonik, welcome. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the nice introduction. So yeah, uh, I come from uh, I come from Bosnia and Sarajevo, and uh, as you said, I started uh, working with digital art back in 2003 when I first discovered Photoshop as a as a young teenager, and I haven't really been able to. Be, being from Bosnia, it's very hard to present and sell digital art here because nobody takes digital art seriously here and selling it online was never possible before before nfts that you can just sell and and a fully digital piece not prints or anything else so i've been over a little bit over three years since i've been uh, since i discovered web3 and nfts and since then i've been making and minting my my work on the on the blockchain primarily on the on the ethereum blockchain so my my work is uh, a little bit on the on the i'd say on the darker side i try to explore like uh, some darker emotions, darker uh, experiences in life, because I feel like that those things kind of speak to me since my whole my whole life was not very like uh, nice, I'd say in, in, a, in a nice way. So I kind of through through art, I kind of have uh, this uh, sort of like self healing process is how I put out all of the stuff that's like kind of brewing inside me and around me. So I, I like art that my, my mo main media sort of, of consumption throughout all my life was like video games. So I was quite inspired by games like Silent Hill, like Stalker and one of my favorite artists are Gislav Bekshinsky and Geiger, Jofra Boschart and Andrei Tarkovsky's movies as well, also the Stalker movie. And, and I, I guess I kind of like that uh, darker, moody, atmospheric art, but I don't stray fr from watching and enjoying other types of art when it comes to even like music and movies and stuff. I, I will watch everything, but like my main love is for, for those darker, darker things. So I'm going to share my... Okay, share. I'm gonna share my website and then show a little bit of, of the stuff that I that I kind of make. Okay, so yeah, this is this is my website that I use. Um, so when you open it, you will land on this on this piece called Infant Introspection. It is a piece that I worked on for a little bit over a year. Uh, from the technical standpoint, you, you don't really need a year to finish something like this. But I, the way I do art is I, I'm just going to play a video and let it play in the background for a little bit. Uh, the, the way I approach art is I am, in general, a very, very rational, logical, organized person in every other facet of, of life. So I try to balance that by being a sort of a chaotic in my art but the art making i i pretty much never make plans i don't really ideate too much and write storyboards and uh, do all of that i just uh when i feel like doing something i just sit down and start working on it so it's it's always chaotic. i never know i never know what the end product will be until it's all uh, sort of sort of finished I very rarely I try to do it do it that way because it it kind of brings the balance to my other side of the brain I guess that that's all logical and rational so I try to balance it with a little bit of chaos so this is 
like a small portion of this piece. It's like one of my proudest pieces I ever made because it 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 speaks it speaks for me for my like troubles for my like mental battles health issues and and stuff that I find like that is uh, bugging me about myself and about the world outside. So that's like one one of the pieces that is all all, all made in 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 three D with ZBrush Substance Painter, and then Unreal Engine is used for for rendering all of this. And then I assembled it all in, in DaVinci Resolve. There's like a lot of editing, camera movements and stuff. It's, from the animation standpoint, there's, it's mostly about camera animation and it's like a, going through a st still painting, I, I, I'd say that's kind of good description for this. So moving on from this, you can also check, check, uh, check all of this stuff uh, on my website and my Twitter as well. So when it comes to making art, uh, I think that the most important thing for me is to be uh, satisfied myself. I, I don't. I try not to make art to to satisfy others. I try to make my personal art. I try to make to satisfy first myself. If and if somebody else also likes it, then it's a and it's a big it's a big bonus. But I think if you are making personal art, you should be aiming to please yourself first and then if anybody else likes it as well so that that's just an additional additional bonus uh, besides working with 3d so this is one of the pieces that i have here for 3d this is uh this is what uh one one more piece that i made it's a very simple piece it's mostly i, I like to focus mostly on the 3D sculpture and the animation is always sort of used to just showcase the, the sculpture itself. So sometimes I make stuff that I, I don't even may know why I actually <laughs> kind of made it, but I just felt like I needed to execute it and that's it, it lives there. So sometimes even the explanations of the art escapes me. I personally don't like explaining my art too, too much like in detail, detailed descriptions and stuff. I, I kind of like to leave the person to kind of figure it out on their own. Uh, besides using 3D, I also use, uh, use AI. And I know that's like a very divisive topic nowadays, but I like to use AI in a more uh, experimental ways to try to kind of break it and not not make the same things that most people are making. I find that if I want to make something specific, then I will not use AI for that. And I can go in 3D and model and sculpt it, animate and everything. But I like using AI for the unpredictiveness and for doing something that's you never even thought of. You can get crazy ideas. So this piece called uh, The Struggle is a piece yeah, as, as you could have guessed, about the struggle in general, the struggle in life, struggle about the world, emotional struggles. It can be about struggle pretty much in general. But what I did with this is I kind of broke stable diffusion and I rendered small strips that I then glued up and made like a huge 8,000 by 2,000 image that I made that it's completely infinitely tileable. And then I made, with one team, I made this uh, viewer that allows you to scroll through the piece itself. It's a very huge piece and you can scroll forever. That's why it's, it's like a, an infinite struggle. So it, it, it works technically and conceptually to give birth to this. And it's pretty much like a, an abstract forms of, of, of bodies that are just like trying to, to do something to fight through this whole mess. And it just keeps going pretty much forever, forever. And that's how I sometimes feel with all these wars in the world and all our struggles and how the pandemic messed us all up mentally even more. And I don't know, it's the, the, that's kind of the, the, the stuff that it's, that's, that's going on in my head pretty much. So, yeah. And I also have here uh, a few collections that there's this, uh, also, this was also done with, with, with AI that I also uh, have 52 collections, 50 pieces each that have visions of birth and visions of death. And they kind of share this like a uh, link to each other. 
one is birth, one is death, and it's all also re reinterpretation from AI. And then I did a lot of editing, color correction to make them all kind of feel part of a whole and not just like random images, random pictures. And all my work is like minted as, as NFTs minted on my own cold wallet from manifold contracts. If you are in NFTs, you will know what that is and why that is kind of important. And there's there's some other stuff here there is, but it's all it's all sharing the similar team, similar similar narrative about looking into ourselves and into our into our issues as, as, as people, as species, as as identities, and yeah, pretty much. That's it. I, I like to describe my art as just making weird stuff that I even even I sometimes don't don't understand. So that's that's pretty much what it is. So for the future, I don't even know what I'm gonna make next and, and why. So that's that would be pretty much uh, my presentation. Very very, very impressive, uh, Shonik. I, I, the first video you showed. I had to keep reminding myself that it was digital because the it looked like you were just doing very um, cinematic shots of some physical object. It, it was very realistic. Yeah, and thank you. Yeah, I tried my best to make it look like it's not 3D. Yeah, it was. Very There's impressive. also some real life footage at the end. Like the video is pretty long, three and a half minutes. So I didn't want to stretch it all out. So yeah. there's well, a lot going on there. And then thank the you. struggle and and the the. Uh, interactivity and this idea of it being infinite is really really interesting too yeah and, thank you uh, thank you yeah I, I try to make something that's like interesting i say always to myself and to like others the artwork the first thing it needs to be is interesting like if it makes you stop and say huh what's this i think that's a good artwork even if it's like bad in the end but if it's something bland somebody it can be as technical as it can be technical perfection perfection but if the subject is boring then it's it's yeah. ineffective there's no emotional connection at all yeah a reaction an emotional reaction yeah, yeah. Yes. good it whether it's to have, positive or negative it needs to move you yeah. in, in some direction something has yeah. to happen then you're like yeah. oh open your eyes or close your mouth or something when it, you know, you yeah it's, it's it's like in business yes or no is great maybe is useless right yeah so yeah, yeah. That, that, that yeah give me no. something like punch me in the yeah. face something give me <laughs> some reaction awesome well thank you so much for sharing that i encourage everyone to go to shonique.art and and watch that whole uh video in its entirety yeah, it also has a music more the video as well so yeah if you watch it make sure to turn on sound terrific terrific well, let's go to our third dot artist today. Thank you so much. So Thank it's my you. pleasure now to introduce Mariana Estrada. Um, Mariana is an artist from Costa Rica. She draws inspiration from nature and her homeland. She's a graduate of Texas A&M University in environmental design, and she further honed her skills in Florence, Italy. So, so she's uh, been all over the world. She ran a bed and breakfast called El Punto in Liberia, <laughs> which was decorated with all of her vibrant impressionist um inspired paintings and even though she closed the bed and breakfast i believe all of that beautiful artwork is still there so it's my pleasure to welcome mariana thank you i'm, I'm very pleasured and honored to be here thank you for inviting me um well most of what you you uh, jeff has mentioned uh, already is um uh, <laughs> uh, are things that I, I planned to say today. <laughs> I wasn't very sure what to say. But um, basically, uh, I started painting as a child. I really enjoyed coloring and, and drawing and painting. And then as I, as I got older, uh, I decided to go in, and study architecture. And while I was studying architecture, I enrolled in some figure drawing um, figure drawing uh, classes that um, really is kind of like the stepping stone that where I started painting. I want to try to open, share my screen. Uh, let me see, sorry. Share screen. Uh, I want to see if I can 
can I, I'm not sure if what what you what you're watching what right now <laughs> there. Um, so I am. First of all, my, my website is bas basically like a virtual gallery of the work I've done um, uh, before and, and I'm trying to, and things that I have done recently. I've collected a few pieces from things I, went, I did back when I was in, in college and things that I did in, in while I was studying art and then, and then things that I have done uh, recently. So I was telling you the story about the figure drawing class and um, I did this piece called eh, La eh, Cristo Esquipulas. Sorry, I'm, I'm having a little bit of being a little <laughs> confused here on how to manage both things together. Um, it's um, on my website, you can see it as, as Costa Rica. Sorry, I don't think I, you... I don't. I don't think I'm doing this right. Um, it's actually this piece. I think you can see it now. Um, and basically, um, I wanted to show you this particular piece because it's it's um, it's when but after I took that that figure drawing class, then I moved forward and took a painting course that sort of combined both things and. I had this this picture of of this um, scene of um, something called a, a la, la procesión or the procession of Cristo Esquipula that happens in a town close to where I live, and um, I, ha I have been always been fascinated by these people who who who, who go into this event, and they all wear their typical attire, and and uh, to me that I. I, I used to go with my, my mother every year and, and, and it was always fascinating to see. So I decided to paint this, this scene, which is basically what you would look if you were um, in this, um, in this uh, um, activity, <laughs> let's say. Um, and then also um, when I graduated, when I graduated from from university, I I like I like uh, Jeff said I I studied painting, and and when I was there, um, I, I I was in school in Italy, and and I had taken some pictures of my parents' uh, garden, and I decided to paint a guaria morada, which is the um, Sorry, I'm, I'm again confused with this. I have to go back. Can you see what I don't? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm sure you're seeing my. I don't know what you're seeing right now. Sorry. Um, yeah, we're still seeing the same painting. Just just uh, click on your website as you would normally, and it'll change for us. There you go. Okay. Um. There. Sorry. <laughs> no. No worries. So again, oh, yeah. it's under, yeah. under Costa Rica, and I, I kind of wanted to show you that um, it's it's called Guarias, and basically it's a painting of the Guaria Morada, which is our typical flower, the national flower of Costa Rica, and um, and uh, this was really where I I think I found my voice as a painter because before I I didn't really I mean, I, I I didn't know. I knew the basic about the technique, the different techniques in painting, but I it was there where I really learned. I I went, I think, I think further on my studies in in painting, and um, then when I um, moved back home, I worked in this bed and breakfast that I decorated with my own paintings because we needed something to to decorate the walls, and buying art was very expensive and. And uh, I didn't want to have posters. I, I kind of preferred having original art. So I said, well, I, I, I can go forward and try to paint things my own and, my, my, and myself. And uh, I, of course, wanted, wanted them to be bright and colorful and happy for people to enjoy and, 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 and also a little bit playful. Because this place where the bed and breakfast was housed, um, 
used to be a school. So um, an, an elementary school. So I kind of wanted to keep that playfulness or childish uh, uh, persona uh, related to the to to the paintings. And uh, so these these so these are my uh, this is other types of paintings that I did before, which um, are basically flowers and nature. Um, but all very colorful and bright. Um, going back to my um, figure drawing classes, I, in that in that time, I used to paint whole figures. But um, when I started to paint these uh, other uh, paintings for El Punto, um, I I decided to to try to make faces. And um, of, of course, making faces is very hard, <laughs> but um, trying to make it a little bit cartoonish and uh, but still very bright and, and, and colorful. Sorry, I'm trying to manage both things at the same time and I'm getting being confused, sorry. No worries. It, 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 <laughs> Sorry. The images are beautiful, and and uh, the style is very unique. Um, and uh, yeah, so so this is it. And and then I have this other painting. I I want to try to to make it bigger. Um, this I also painted while I was in college. Um, it's called Motherhood. I'm I'm not sure if you can make it bigger. I, I I'm I'm unable to go back to my website and let me see there just just yeah click on it like you normally would you yeah go. i i'm trying but it's kind of hard okay there, there we go there it was a little slow anyways this painting i painted while i was in in college and um now a uh, many years later it has back come it, ha it came back to me because um i'm now a mother <laughs> i know what motherhood is about and uh, and it was really strange that back then, like almost 20 years ago, I painted this painting of a mother holding the baby. You know, it, it's it's um, it feels like you know that that's what it feels like. You know, the first days when you're and first, you know, you're when you're first born. Uh, you know, it, you know, long nights with your first born, <laughs> and then you're you know very 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 excited and happy of about having a child but it's also exhausting at times uh, <laughs> and um that is basically the reason why i started painting um, i became a mother a full-time mother and housewife and uh and and yes of course it's a great opportunity and it's wonderful to be with my children but um sometimes i feel like i need to do something else so after many years of not painting again, um, I decided to start painting again. And um, then uh, a friend of mine mentioned about um, having my own website, like a virtual gallery. And I thought it was a really an amazing, an amazing idea. And I stumbled upon a, well, when I, I he, he, he gave me a contact of, a company that builds websites specifically for artists and I needed to buy my own domain and they um, and they mentioned uh, that it was best if I used my full name to identify my website but my my uh, domain like dot com domain with my website with my name was already taken so I started Googling, and that's how I found uh, the, uh, the possibility of, of having a dart art domain, which seemed so logical. You know, it would be marianastrada.art. That would be like the most logical thing to do. So this is how I became a member of the dart art community, and, and, and it's, it's amazing. <laughs> Uh, we're, we're very happy to have you as part of the community. And, and yes, I, we, we definitely agree that, uh, you know, using your name and dot art declares yourself as an artist and, and it works perfect. And, and your artwork is beautiful. And it was interesting as you were discussing motherhood 
it's almost like as, as I was watching the image, it sort of took shape in my mind and became even more clear as you talked about it. It was really interesting. Um, so very beautiful. We're very happy to have you join us today. So thank you so thank much, Mary. No, thank you for the invitation. Thank you. So that's our three dot artists for this month's webinar. Um, we have a few minutes left if there are some questions. Um, we have a, we had a question I see for um, Shanique about uh, NFTs. Um, someone asked in the chat, um, what has been your experience with creating and selling NFTs and how do you think this has impacted your artistic career? Uh, well, it, 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 uh, it's a roller coaster, I can say. Like it's, it's something completely new, completely new world and completely new way of uh, creating, not really creating, but, but selling, selling art. You have to be very active and especially on Twitter. That's where all the discourse is happening, pretty much. And then it's, yeah, as I said, it's very polarizing. It can be very stressful. The space moves very fast and asks for trends, and you will have advice thrown at you from left side, from right side, from top to bottom. One will say, don't mint too much. And then somebody else will say, mint whatever you want. And then it's, you have to find your own way through all that. Uh, pretty much sewage. There's like a lot of bad stuff going on there. And there, it's very ripe for scams and stuff. So you have to pretty much educate yourself a lot before you venture into the into the crypto world, I, I would say. And how it is, I mean, my artistic career pretty much didn't exist before selling NFTs. As I said before, I've done art for like 20 years, but I've never sold my art because nobody in Bosnia here would buy anything digital. And you couldn't even sell it online, digital uh, artwork. But now with, with, with Web3, with crypto, you can be anywhere in the world. You're not uh, banned by, like, if you are, for instance, from Iran or Iraq, you, you can't sell your work to, like, Americans or anywhere, pretty much. But if you're using crypto, you can sell your art anywhere to anyone. It's decentralized, instant, very fast. So I think it, it helps to with digital art especially to to sell your work to anybody in the world without yeah. any other like borders it's interesting as, as we traveled around as i mentioned earlier to different art fairs and festivals there's very little digital art in some of the the mainstream fairs like at the armory show and even art basel proper there was very little but when you yeah. get into some of yeah, the it, side it's still like not getting recognized as, as a as a it's true like Art form. And there's like a, there's a lot of stuff that can that can also only exist in the digital realm, yeah. especially some some stuff that is like now like the generate art that's using like blockchain to create art like on the fly. And it's using like some there's some artworks that use like Ethereum price to modify the, the artwork on the fly. And there's like some new dynamic contracts that, that are emerging that allow you to replace art with different things. So it's it's yeah, very, very so exciting, but still like there's a long almost, road, road ahead. Almost comes alive. At, at During Miami Art Week and Art Basel, actually one of the members of our community, Gateway.art, they had a spectacular digital art exhibit um, uh, at the- Yeah, there, there have been a few at Art Basel. Yeah, 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 yeah I've yeah. noticed. The Gateway.art, and they had some magnificent work, including something from Refik Anadol. So uh, I think it's growing. You know, we have one of another member of our community, Mondoir, who has oh, yeah, a gallery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know Mondoir? So yeah, he has I, a one of my pieces was exhibited in London at his gallery. Okay. Yes, he had a gallery. Yeah, he's a London. big, big member of the whole Web3 community. And he's a, he's a great, great guy, does great, great work for many artists. Yeah. Terrific. Yeah, he has a gallery in, in Dubai and it's all digital, yeah, yeah. So all screens. Terrific. Well, thank you. We had a question for uh, Ia. Um, and yeah, also I know that you use ID.art in addition to a regular .art name, but the, the, and I don't know if you had any thoughts on that, but also the question about uh, for you is what advice would you give to aspiring illustrators, particularly those interested in children's book illustration? Well, for um, uh, aspiring, um, uh, my, my best way is um, I usually go to the bookshop and uh, watch another book, uh, illustration books for kids, for adults. I usually go for some exhibitions with um, books, with illustration books. So 
more you different illustration you can see uh more you can uh create because uh, you'll see another illustrations another works another illustration and uh, you can uh, use it for your own style to make your unique style terrific and then at id.art have you taken advantage of creating certificates of authenticity and some of the other features at your id.art profile sorry i didn't hear it was uh, I was asking, you also been using ID.art. You have a profile there. Yes. So I was curious yes. if, you've, if you've created certificates of authenticity and, and tried some of the different other tools that are built into ID.art. Well, I'm just in the beginning with all this, but uh, I think it's a great idea, a great uh, opportunity. Uh, to have like certificate for your not only paintings but for illustrations too because I've already come across that my illustration being stolen and used without my permission. So when you yeah, have so this it, certificate, it's very good. Yeah, IP protection is very important. So, terrific. Thank you, uh, um, Ia. We have one more question for Mariana. We're getting towards the end. Uh, for Mariana, a question, having studied environmental design, how have these experiences influenced your approach to art? So how did environmental design in influence you? <laughs> well, I think that um, environmental design uh, really opens, re really opened my, um, my sense for, in, for, for investigation. Like I, I, I always try to research things and um, uh, and so and, and also collect information uh, now for example trying to figure out what what else to paint I always take pictures and keep my pictures of things I like and and start making catalogs for say of, of, of images that I might be interested in painting in the future and um, this is part of the creative process that you learn in, in architecture and in environmental design when, when I was going to school. Terrific. Well, thank you, Mariana. Well, we're, we're coming up on the top of the hour. So I think, I think we'll, we'll wrap up um, this month's edition of Meet the Dot Artists. I think it was really uh, interesting to see the differences, uh, the different styles and the different experiences our three artists today have had, um, you know, from from illustration to more traditional art to digital. So I really want to thank uh, Ia and Shonique and Mariana for joining us today and sharing their work. And I encourage everyone who's watching this video and watching the webinar live or the recording to please visit their websites and check out more of their artwork. And if, if anything strikes your fancy, buy it, support the arts and support the artists. Uh, and we appreciate everyone being here today. This is um, the January edition of Meet the Dot Artists, and stay tuned, and we'll be shortly announcing the dates and the artists for our February Meet the Dot Artists webinar. This is something we'll be doing every month to support the artists in our community, to expose you to new artists, and to, to help uh, promote their work and give them an opportunity to promote themselves to you so we're we really appreciate you all being here uh if you'd like any more information about dot art you can visit www.art.art if you're interested in registering a dot art domain and taking advantage of our free website builder you can go to www.get.art that's our flagship store and of course as we've talked about you can go to id.art that's id.art and sign up and try out our new platform there um, which is open right now as well. So thanks again for joining us. We hope to see you again uh, soon at our next webinar. Again, thank you to our artists today. Um, this has been a wonderful edition of Meet the Dot Artists. Thanks, everyone.